I, there was a time about, I don't know, six, seven, eight years ago when DC Comics asked me, they wanted to do a series of books called What If Stan Lee Had Created the DC Universe or something like that. And they asked me to write Superman, Batman, the Wonder Woman, the Green Lantern, and I don't know, 10 or 12 of their books as if I had created them. So I changed all of them around. I made Batman a black man. I made the Flash a female. I, I just for fun, just to make them different. I really enjoy doing it. Only 40% of you are subscribed. Fix that. I want to say thank you to my Patreon subscribers and um, my Twitch subscribers. If you want to help out the channel, you can actually help out for as little as a buck a month. Enjoy the video and have some fun. So, in celebration. So, okay, okay. Let's, let's roll this back. Let's roll this back a little bit. I am an artist. I go to conventions, I sell my art, and hopefully this weekend I can actually pay for Anime Halloween that's in Chicago so I can have a table. But one of the things that I fucking hate is that I actually create my own original characters. But, but, a lot of people don't want your original characters. They want fan content of always established characters. They want to take a story and make it popular based on something that they already know. It's the paradox of a fan. The fan wants something new, but they always want it to stay the same. And, um, well, in celebration of me actually working on fan art, um, I want to actually bring this video I saw like a couple weeks ago to see what it's actually saying. So shall we? Let's go. Hey everybody, Keith here with a couple more thoughts on this whole um, Ribiverse that Eric July has released, and I'm going to get to... Um... So, I, I... Look, 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 look. Here. This man right here has a problem with making characters different. I just want to put that out there. I'm sorry I, for some reason that I don't know why, but let's let's see what his complaint is. And you know what? Fuck Eric July. If you don't know who Eric July is, is Young Ripper fifty nine. He, he he's ten away from being base. Anyway, let this go. The phenomenal. Uh, results at the end of the video but I wanted to just talk about something that had me thinking about because um, I watch a lot of Eric's content of course you watch a lot of content from the token I mean the creator who doesn't actually try to play up the fact that black people shouldn't be in movies or video games or lead us stories yeah sure and I can say that because I have a lot of Eric July videos um, uh, four or five on my channel but it, yeah sure okay let, let's go um most notably the, his commentary on comics and um these uh race swapped and gender swapped characters and how derivative they are so when i call out a lot of these content creators for being shield for sh shields for these you know insecure mediocre ass motherfuckers that are upset because they don't like see, not seeing their favorite character depicted or their favorite type of character depicted in fucking media. This is the shit that I mean. Here, Eric July has, so, I think he's in the hundreds of thousands, but you also have motherfuckers like this who piggyback back off that shit. Well, let's go. Um in lieu of what he's doing with his character, Isom. 
Um, so I just want to make a quick little video about it. And I, I and what these motherfuckers don't realize, and I want to say it like here, a lot of these characters that these authors create are just self insert characters. And he's kind of admitting it's right here that a, a lot of these characters are just self insert for the creator. They're fucking power fantasies. And if it's not of them, in the case of Michael, um, 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 fucking um, Michael Brian Bendis, Brian at Michael Bendis, it is him filling out the roads for, say, like his daughter, or you know, just trying to have them seem like they have a um, representation in comics. It's literally in part of that, but let's go. I chose Sam Wilson as the um, the contrasting character to go with here. Now, for those of you who don't know, Sam Wilson, a.k.a. the Falcon, um, and that's who he is to be. Sam Wilson is the Falcon. He's not Captain America. Um, Sam Wilson was... Wait, 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 wait. Why does it fucking matter? Like... I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sorry, this is, this is just me kind of doing some head cannon right here. Um, Sam Wilson has played Captain America or has, you know, taken a mantle of Captain America. And I'm sure a lot of these motherfuckers didn't have an issue when Bucky was Captain America, John Walker was Captain America. Frank Castle was Captain America. I don't know. Like, they weren't talking about, oh, Frank Castle is the Punisher. He shouldn't be taking up the mantle as Captain America. Oh, you know, John Walker is, you know, U.S. agent. He shouldn't be taking up the mantle of Captain America. They didn't They didn't have that issue. The, oh, the one time they really were vocal about it, I wonder what's different about the person who's taking up the mantle of Captain America. I, I'm just, I don't know. All right, let, let's go. It was uh, created in 1969 by Stan Lee and Gene Cohen and made his debut in Captain America number 117. Uh, I'm going to give away something. Uh, I was nine months old when Falcon was created or, or when he was introduced to the world. Anyway, so... Um, Oh no, it only matters because it doesn't give a fuck of how old you are. You're not Marvel, Marvel's publishing brand. Let's go. When I was a kid, I grew up reading a lot of Captain America comic books, and it was Captain America and the Falcon. Uh, that's just the way it was. Uh... Again. He's not talking shit when Bucky, like if he if he comes back and say, "Well, I hated when Bucky was Captain America," or he, "I hated when you know Frank Castle was Captain America," I hated when Johnny Walker was Captain America. Uh, yeah, sure, Let, let's go. Um, Falcon was great, and in the early '80s, '82 or '83, I believe, um, he got his own four-issue miniseries. I loved this comic. Um, it was written at the time by a guy named James Owlsley, who's now known as Christopher Priest, and it was illustrated by longtime X-Men artist Paul Smith. Um, so, I mean, it was great. And, you know, throughout that time growing up reading comics, Sam was the Falcon. He was his own character. He was great. Um, he was... Was he also somebody who Captain America would trust to be you know, Captain America, like, again, he's not bringing up the point of, well, you know, because it was a thing where Steve Rogers wasn't out, like, he hasn't mentioned Steve Rogers, he just keeps mentioning this Captain America, which Captain America, but, uh, all right, let's go. Also, so the first, back to 1969, the first uh, Amer black American superhero in comics, so, um, Along comes 2015, 2016, um, in this weird age that we currently live in, this woke. So <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, 
when has Marvel ever not been woke? I'm sorry. Like, I don't get when these motherfuckers actually get that Marvel is just all of a sudden being woke in 2015. I'm, I'm sorry. Like, like, what? In 2015, Marvel is just deciding to be woke because reasons. Reasons. Okay, let's let's go. Social justice warrior victim culture society. Wait, social justice warrior. Like I I oh my god. Okay, okay. Stanley made a post being a social justice war warrior. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, kid. I'm fucking sorry. For you to be a few years older than me, you are a fucking kid. Like, I, okay, okay. Stan Lee. Is he in his mama's basement? He got the, okay, I'm sorry. I'm, just, I'm being an asshole. Stan Lee. Mr. Stan Lee. Like, yes, he fucked over his writers and artists, but he, he was always a social justice warrior. It's fucking Stan Lee. Like, what the fuck do you... Okay. Oh, God. And Marvel gets the great idea to launch a new, uh, all new, all different Marvel through their Marvel Now. And um, they did a lot of this derivative race and gender swapping of characters. And one of their ideas was to turn Falcon into Captain America. Your point, motherfucker. I, I, I'm so confused with this one, right? I'm so confused with this one. Because it's just literally just, hey, he was, like, for the lack of a better term, he was Cap's sidekick for a while. And Cap was like, yo, after we tried this person, this person, this person, this person, and this person, Sam, you, your turn is next with the shield. Like, like, I, I, okay, sure, man, sure, that's, that's how you want to look at it, but let's, let's go ahead. America. Now, I'm not going to go over this in great detail, but let's suffice to say, um, using Eric July's own terminology, this is just a hand-me-down t-shirt. This is, this is a validation that, uh, this, this character is only validated by, Wait, so you're telling me, you're telling me a character who played fucking um, sidekick to Captain America doesn't deserve to have his own. Like, it's, it wasn't even that he, and then it talked about the stories that, that was actually done, talked about the fucking racism that he faced because, well, Captain America is supposed to be blonde and blue-eyed. And blue and even Steve Rogers is like, no, that's some bullshit, man. That, that is some straight up bullshit. I chose you as my successor. Like, he, th these motherfuckers act like Isaiah Bradley didn't exist, and, and Captain America did was like, yo, that what they the U.S. did to you was fucked up shit. Like, like, I, like they don't get it. They are literally doing the thing that Stan Lee actually warned about. They are doing the thing. All because their fucking feelings are hurt because Steve Rogers didn't get in America. Even though, even though he would have actually wanted this shit. In the comics, he wrote the shit. And uh, fictional characters, right? Fictional characters, right? But let's go, let's go. Taking the mantle from an established white character, Steve Rogers, <laughs> the, the Captain America. Um, in my opinion... Wait, wait. Does he mention that there are other people who were Captain America outside of Steve Rogers? No, he doesn't. He's like, they're taking away from white people. All this affirmative action in motherfucking comic book stories and shit like that. Oh, they got these, these black people getting all uppity and shit. The colors and shit like that, right? Like, the fuck, man? Okay, okay. I'm being an ass, but like, this is how this motherfucker sounds. But let's continue. Steve Rogers is Captain America, and Sam Wilson is the Falcon. Both equally great 
for who they are. Because comic books have never changed no time ever at all. Because reasons. There's no reason to give a hand-me-down t-shirt to Sam Wilson. And when creators get confronted with this idea that, you know, all you did was you, you, you know, you just uh, race swapped an established character. Uh, and, and at the same time, delegitimized or, or deconstructed the character you had. All right. So do we do it? Do we fucking do it? We fucking do it. Let's, let's, let's go to it. Um, let's go to it. Here we go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Trying to pull it up now, guys. Here, let's see if we can actually find it. Um... Here, let's see if I can actually find it. I'm still looking, guys. That wasn't it. Cause I forget what the interview he did. Give me a second. Cause a lot of these are chud actual websites where Stanley actually had, um, here, where is that at? Fuck, I can't find it. Here, let's let's look at it right here. Um entry. At first glance it, it seems like race Stanley is against changing the race of superheroes um, is wrong. However, how does he feel about race changing? I... Here, when the director asked him if it was okay to change the Chinese storm from white to black, it was more than okay. I thought it was a great idea. Stan Lee said he's excited about changing the Fantastic Four members. Race added, I don't think they're going to love this character. I think they're going to love this character. I'm not at least we're worried about it. I always try to pepper in these groups with much racial diversity as possible because it's that way. Now, one minute it says um, 
he says it's wrong and the next minute he says it's awesome it could be that he's getting see now but i don't think it is he's making a valid point some fans don't like their superheroes change in any way and dramatic changes like race or gender it can upset them even if they're not prejudiced so it's important not to be labeled as fan as hateful because they don't like changes even black comic fans hate race swapping secondly comic creators work hard to create characters and it's probably hurts them to see their characters they love feel like they're changed third there's a personal element to this the big difference is between the fantastic four and spider-man superhero so in one case he was upset about changing spider-man because i guess it was a space but there have been times where stan lee has literally quite literally says changing the race of like batman to be a poor black kid from the streets one moment and i forget what that quote is here let me actually look for it because i don't want to seem like i'm hiding the shit unlike all these other motherfuckers here give me a second everybody just brings up that spider-man quote Everybody brings up that quote here. Let's let's just do this one. Give me a second. I can't find it. I can't find it because I see recent articles, but I do know that it was in another article that he um, wrote before. And fuck. I can't find it. I know that there are conflicting things about Stan Lee, which, I mean, like, like I said before, he wasn't consistent with the way he treated his employees. But, you know. I just can't find it anymore. I'm seeing a lot of the same quotes harkening back to 2015. Hey, this is Crimson with a quick edit. I found the clip. Here it goes. Sorry about the voice quality. People often ask me, which of the DC characters would I have liked to have written? And it really doesn't matter to me because I like writing anything. Um, I think if I had done Superman, I would have done him differently. I would have made him more vulnerable. I think the idea of being able to do anything makes you a little uninteresting. Um, Batman is a good idea. It's interesting, the, the writer of Batman, the, fe the fellow who, who created Batman, Bob Kane, was a friend of mine. And he was a funny guy, just the opposite of me. Um, he would go to a restaurant with me, we'd have dinner. The minute the waiter came over, do you know who I am? I'm Bob Kane, I created Batman, here I'll draw you a picture. I wanted to crawl under the table. <laughs> I would never say anything mm -hmm. like that. But he was so happy that he and proud of what he had done and he, and he was always late. Every time we have dinner with our wives, if the appointment was for eight o'clock, he'd get there at a quarter after. And we try to top each other. Joan and I would say at the next dinner, you know what, let's be 20 minutes late. We'll show him. So we'd get there 20 minutes late, but he won. He'd be a half hour late. And uh, we'd say, let's get there three quarters of an hour late. He'd be there an hour late. I mean, I couldn't beat this guy. <laughs> um, but anyway, I there was a time about I don't know, six, seven, eight years ago when DC Comics asked me 
they wanted to do a series of books called What If Stan Lee Had Created the DC Universe, or something like that. And they asked me to write Superman, Batman, the Wonder Woman, the Green Lantern, and I don't know, 10 or 12 of their books, as if I had created them. So I changed all of them around. I made Batman a black man. I made the Flash a female. I, I Just for fun, just to make them different. I really enjoyed doing it. But anyway, let's get back to the one fucking video. Let's go. Let's go. And by the way, there's also such thing as the death of the author. Once you actually put something out there, it's gone. But let's go. Sam as the Falcon was great. Sam as the Falcon was fine. Sam should stay the Falcon. Right? Uh, and there are general responses that, well... Here's the problem, you know, we'll say, why, why'd you do this? Why don't you just create an original character? You, you know, you don't have to go and start butchering existing property. And their excuse is always that, well, you know, longtime fans won't accept a new character. They won't, they won't buy into a new character, especially one who may be a minority or uh, a woman. Well, he realizes that that's actually true right he realized it that like people actually don't right am, 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 am i come on right like he knows that that happens right all right, all right let's go well that brings us to the ripperverse this is in its 11th day it is at three million plus dollars 34,000 individual purchasers. Eric's goal was $100,000. He cried. We all know that right wing motherfuckers always get their funding from legitimate and, you know, valid places. Ask Alice Jones. I'll wait. Let's go. Crush that in less than an hour. Um, to me, this tells you that the argument that these talentless activist writers in comic books make that no one will buy an original character, there's no audience for an original minority character, they're full of crap. Now, we don't know anything about Isom beyond what's written here. And what's written here is... Is he suggesting that people are just choosing to get a... Oh my God. He is suggesting that... Wait, he is like literally suggesting that... Oh no, just out of the strength of having a paragraph on a fucking... Is this Patreon? This no, this is not Patreon. Not um, um, GoFundMe. Having a paragraph on a GoFundMe, not all of the media attention that Eric July gets, including being on one of the right wings podcasts as a host. Because remember, we saw that motherfucker on that um, as one of the hosts on that um, show that Sydney Watson, Sydney Watson. Oh God, I'm tired. Like shit on um, Nick Fuentes on, but like yeah, yeah no yeah because reasons. But l let's go. Is Avery Silman is a common rancher, but that wasn't always the case. After obtaining some unique abilities, Avery spent a brief brief stint being a hero under the moniker Isom in the city of Floor Park, Texas. Realizing that it wasn't for him, he walked away from this life. But after responding to a call from his sister. Some violent altercations ensue, and has Avery reconsidering his approach. What happened? Grab Isom number one to find out. So, that's it. That's all we know about this character. And it was put out by Eric July. Like, wait, wait, he does not get it. Oh, wow. Okay. Shit. All right, let's, let's go. 
and this character that that brief synopsis has generated over three million dollars in business with 64 days left to go on this sky's the limit and marvel and dc better take notice because your justification i think marvel and dc are doing just fine i i something tells me marvel and dc are doing just fine but I, okay let's go for things like this doesn't fly it's bullshit it's bullshit because there lies the proof so I know some of you are going to look at this and laugh. You're going to say, well, well, you know, who is this? This is, you know, some YouTuber that uh, caught lightning in a bottle, what have you. Do not discount what this could turn into. I'll close with this. Uh, uh, wow. Oh, okay. Okay. Really, you think that you really think that the only reason why this actually was. I, I have man like wow he thinks that the reason why this kickstarter is done so well is because a paragraph i oh okay all, all right sure let, let's 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 go in the 1980s i worked in a comic shop and um the comic shop was taken on was you know enduring some hard times and I remember they said, uh, well, this week we're a little short on cash. We'll pay you in merchandise. And I said, oh, all right. Dude, that was illegal. They should have paid you in your cash. Like, I... Only a dumb fuck would actually... Ex oh, what am I talking about? He's talking about Eric Dubai can actually turn up the world. Like, the fuck... Okay, let's go. Let's go. And they said, uh, why don't you go through the stack of what came in this week and take whatever you want, take as many as you want. And the woman I worked for said, uh, check this out. This, this is a self-published magazine from these two guys in New Hampshire uh, about these four turtles who practice martial arts. Oh, wow. Are they teenagers? Are they also mutants? Like the fuck? Dude, like, he doesn't, he doesn't get it. He remembers, like, I get it. Like, you remember, like, the shit that, like, stands out, but you never remember all of the failures and shit like that. But sure, because one time it happened here, it's gonna happen for everybody. So let's go. Why don't you grab a couple of these? They're number ones. I leafed through it. Didn't really grab my attention. It was, uh, you could tell it was low budget. And the sad part about it is, he's not realizing the reason why the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles wasn't the comic books. They literally completely disregard the comic books, except for the last Ronin. But like, yeah, because, because the comic books are so great. But let's go. You could tell it was self-published. I passed on it book was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one. What? No. We all know what happened there. So that's it for me. Um, please like, uh, share, subscribe. Uh, oh, God, leave a thanks, comment God. below. If you don't thanks, like what God. you saw here, if you don't agree with it. I, no, I don't. I don't. I don't. Oh, God. I... I don't know, man. Oh, God. That's just so painful and mind-numbing. You know what? I'm I'm done for today. I worked on my art. Still gonna put some layers and stuff all over Zuko and shit like that. I'm gonna fucking spunk them up. Pause. Um. Anyway. Anyway. Please like, share, subscribe, and all that other good shit. Um. Yeah. We're we're yeah. Cause we all know that um. Shit like that happens all the time, and you know. You're just one day away from having a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and all that other good shit. And um, Eric July is a, he, like, I don't even see the sales because I guess it hasn't sold yet. There's no reviews for the comics. Oh, who the fuck am I kidding? 
you know the right wings are going to actually make it where they can, you know, number one, sell his shit because reasons and money and funding and all that other good shit. But anyway, like, share, subscribe. And um, other than that, peace the fuck out. Oh, God. Thank you.